I'm Jocelyn, and this is a naked woman. <laughs> this is Olympia by Edouard Manet. It was first exhibited in Paris in 1865 at the Salon. And when people first saw this painting, they completely lost their shit. The Salon had to post armed guards in front of the canvas because huge crowds kept threatening to throw stones at it. They would gather to laugh and jeer. Um, okay, but so what freaked them out so much about this painting? It was definitely not the fact that she was naked. These were all exhibited at the same salon the same year. None of them caused any problems of any kind. Every single one of them has naked women in them. Here's a close-up of a completely uncontroversial naked woman painting at the same salon. Nudes were completely standard fare. This nude, however, was scandalous for 1865 Parisians. This cartoon, which showed up in a newspaper that month, I've translated below the caption that the cartoonist provided. Madam, what is it? There's a man that wants to see you on business. Show him in. Apparently, that's how it's done among certain ladies. People of the time saw this as obviously a painting of a sex worker. And the reasons they thought that was obvious, some of them are kind of bizarre and opaque to us today, like the fact that there was an orchid in her hair was apparently symbolic of prostitutes, because, you know, orchids, they're super dirty. <laughs> um, but some of it's actually really common sense. This is a completely naked woman hanging out in bed in high heels. She's also got a full face of makeup, she's got jewelry. Naked, high heels, they saw it as pornographic. They saw it as the only reason she would be wearing that there would be if she was selling sex. And that was not okay, because nudes were supposed to be non-sexual. They were naked. But you don't have sex with a nude. You don't look at it like that. It's art. Art. <laughs> art. And it was also an open secret at the time that the models for these paintings, right? Because the painters, the artists had to paint someone. And the women who were willing to accept money in exchange for hanging around naked for hours and hours while someone looked at them, those women tended to be sex workers. And you weren't supposed to talk about that. Like, the people going to the salon, they knew that those models were mostly prostitutes. But Manet broke all the rules by announcing that they were typically sex workers. They also objected to the cat. <laughs> it's hard to see, but that black cat in the corner is pissed off. That cat <laughs> is frightened and angry, and cats had very sexual connotations for people of this moment. Um, the French for a female cat, la chatte, was slang for a woman's genitals. As in, here's Olympia, and here's her pussy. Um, la chatte was also, it was multi-purpose, it was also slang for a prostitute. All around sexual, apparently. Cats, female sexual voraciousness. This description was written 10 years before. An animal so keen on maintaining her appearance, so silky, so shiny, so eager for caresses, so ardent and responsive, so graceful and supple, an animal who makes the night her day and who shocks decent people with the noise of her orgies can... <laughs> can only have one analogy in this world, and that analogy is one of the feminine kind. How, notice how bizarre 
bizarrely indirect that statement is in its explicitness. Like, dude, you could have just said prostitute and it would have been a lot less graphic. They also objected to this painting because they were a bunch of racists. Um, this cartoon exhibited that was printed that month echoes and participates in hundreds of years of racist caricature. And basically the idea that came across in the racist commentaries on this painting were that if Olympia was a prostitute, it was the black woman's fault. <laughs> Um, if you look at the ways in which the black woman's face, as it's drawn in this cartoon, echoes hundreds of years of blackface and racist caricature, um, the facial features typical of those caricatures, the bugged out eyes, the enormous mouth, they're echoed in Olympia's face in this cartoon, as if the idea was that that woman's blackness was somehow contagious. As if by being naked in her presence, Olympia became a prostitute, became sullied, became sexual in a way that, you know, because white women aren't sexual, no. Um, okay, so these are all ways in which people of the moment thought that Olympia was horrifyingly new and horrifyingly different. And what they were very carefully and deliberately ignoring was the set of ways in which it very deliberately and closely echoed hundreds of years of Western nudes. This, Titian's Venus of Urbino, is so close to the painting Manet made hundreds of years later that it's almost a kind of friendly plagiarism. The two women are posed in almost identical positions. What's happening with their arms, the way their bodies are positioned. In this one, there's a sleeping lapdog at her feet, as opposed to the angry as fuck, very awake cat. <laughs> Here we have two very demure white servants in the background getting clothes for the naked lady. Um, and here we have a woman who's just kind of right up in her face and does not seem to have any problem with the fact that she's completely naked. Also, the gazes. It's actually very unusual for nude paintings for the woman to be looking at the viewer. This was an exception, she is looking at you. But she's looking at you kind of indirectly, kind of flirtatiously, but very sleepily. She doesn't seem terribly aware. Olympia is very aware. There's a kind of Mona Lisa quality to her face. Sometimes I look at her and she looks very in control. Like she's saying, yep, this is me. Give me money if you want to look at it. Other times she looks really sad to me. Like she's very aware of her own powerlessness. But either way, I don't think there's any way to characterize the look on her face as otherwise than aware. And aware and looking straight at you was kind of terrifying for a nude of the moment. Titian, in turn, had echoed and f done friendly plagiarism of this guy, Giorgione's Sleeping Venus. Again, totally the same layout. It's actually um, very typical of nudes that they are of goddesses, of Roman goddesses, because, sorry, Greek or Roman goddesses, because that's what they did. They hung out naked all the time. There needed to be some plausible storyline for why the woman was naked. This one is a contemporary lady, but her servants are getting her clothes. She's about to get dressed, so it's okay. Only plausible storyline for Olympia's nakedness is that she's selling sex, at least according to people of the moment. Nudes were supposed to be completely different from pornography, which did exist. Oh, right, the hand. <laughs> They objected very much to her hand. It was covering her genitals, 
And by covering her genitals on purpose, she was acknowledging that she had genitals and that was not okay. <laughs> the thing is, I mean, the way in which the hand is making contact with the genitals here, a <laughs> little bit of light fondling, maybe some idle masturbation. So, okay, prim and proper, chaste, awesome, scandalous. <laughs> Pornography in this moment did exist. It tended to look quite different from high art nudes. A lot more clothes in these images and a lot more genitals. They, they also tended to look very different in terms of their layout. There is a lot going on in these drawings. And I mean that on a visual artistic level as well. In terms of the layout, there are just lines everywhere, figures everywhere. There's a lot of visual noise in these drawings. Nudes were supposed to be visually clean with smooth, clean, simple lines. On the other hand, early pornographic photography very deliberately echoed high art nudes. These, the photos on the bottom here, were made intended to be porn. They were sold as porn for large sums of money in back alleys and in small private rooms behind bookstores. But these photographers who saw themselves as pornographers also were very deliberately and very carefully echoing high art. Um, the top image is the Rokeby Venus. It's a very famous high art nude. And they were very carefully echoing it with the curtains, with the positioning of the women. Here again, we have a very famous classical nude and a pornographic image deliberately imitating it. The thing is that these nudes were always seen as sexual. You just weren't supposed to talk about it. Porn like this was very hard to get a hold of. It was very expensive. It was frequently illegal. And in a situation like that, it's just not hard to see how someone would have experienced this in a sexual way. And it's also just a correct description of this painting, which was completely okay, not at all scandalous in 1860 in Paris. It is a painting of sex. Here we have a completely uncontroversial 1870s painting of an orgy um, with four or possibly seven women and a goat dude. <laughs> this one was slightly scandalous at the time. Um, but not very, nowhere close to Olympia. Um, the Prime Minister of Spain commissioned this painting, and he also commissioned this painting. <laughs> and he hung them, one in front of the other, in a private room on a pulley mechanism. <laughs> so that whenever he wished, with the right company or in the absence of company, <laughs> So, oh, these nudes were always sexual. Um, Manet's crime was that he announced them as such. Thanks. Woo!